Hey everyone, welcome to Midweek. This is a time of devotion and worship. My name is Don Conley and leading us to worship today is Pastor David. So as we get started today, we just want to ask you to go ahead and invite others to join us for our time of worship and encouragement. And in the midst of all this chaos, what we want to do is we want to lift the name of Jesus higher in worship and spend some time with him. So if you would, just go ahead right now and hit that share button. Let's share hope and truth uh, with others along with us today. Today, I want us to look in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 15 as we get started. And, and notice what the writer says here. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. In America, our dancing has certainly turned into mourning. And it's true not only across America, but countries even around the world. As you know, this virus spreads across this country, uh, it also spreads increasing sadness. People are struggling in many different ways, and maybe you are tonight. Grief is more than real. Now, most of us have experienced grief at one point or time in our life, particularly when someone we love has passed away. Grief is triggered by loss, and most of America is grieving right now because of who and even what we are losing in the midst of all this. Our dancing has turned into mourning. Our grief has been triggered by the loss of jobs, the loss of a healthy economy, the loss of being with one another, the loss of high school and college commencements, the loss of a wedding and reception, and, and even more, we could just keep adding to this list. There's a collective sadness that has spread across the country and even around the world, is, and that sadness has spread just as fast as a virus has. Our dancing has turned into mourning. But here's what I want to do tonight. What if our mourning could be turned into dancing? Psalms chapter 30, verse 11. Notice what David says here. You've turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You've taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. So what we want to do today is, is we want to discover in the Word of God, in Scriptures, how we can most certainly turn our mourning into dancing, our sobbing into singing. We've seen how a virus can you know, be highly contagious. But also, there is fear and panic and uncertainty that goes with all this. I read a story of a couple in their early 50s, and that kind of hits home <laughs> to me, who were victims of fear as they died in an apparent murder-suicide. When they thought that they had contracted this virus, their fear and panic was so overwhelming, it overwhelmed them that they ended their lives abruptly. Now, here's, here's what happened. Their autopsies revealed they did not have this new virus. Remember, remember, fear will always knock at your door. But just don't invite the fear into your life to stay. Last week, we talked about experiencing a contagious faith. That's what we need today is contagious faith instead of a contagious fear. Today, I want us to discover that contagious joy can be more than real in our lives. When the Lord takes and turns our mourning into dancing, as we are grieving the impact of all of this, the five stages of grief that we typically move through is this. One is we experience denial. This is when we think, and many of us maybe kind of started here, this is when we think this virus won't impact me. It won't affect us. The second level is we move to anger. That's the second level of grief. We tend to get angry as we consider lost physical or financial health. You know, we've lost graduations and weddings and family gatherings and, and more. The third level of grief is we begin to bargain. We thought, well, if we just social distance for a couple of weeks, everything will be fine. Everything will be okay. We'll go back to normal, right? The fourth level of grief is when we move into depression. We're convinced that this will never end, that life will never be normal again. Our lives have been totally turned upside down. That's the fourth level of grief. The fifth level of grief is this. Finally, we arrive, we arrive at acceptance. 
we resolve to move on in life, to take the right and necessary next steps through this season of loss, grief. So how do we come to a place of acceptance in our lives? And this is going to be our focus today. How do we do this? How does God's word encourage us when we went through these different levels of grief and maybe each of us are a different place? How do we get to the place of trust and faith, contagious joy? So today, let's worship. Let's allow the Lord to turn our mourning into joyful dancing.
you, David. I just, I love that, the whole focus of that worship song. You know, I will not be afraid. So how do we get to that place where we're not afraid? Someone in the Bible came to a place of acceptance, and his name was Habakkuk. His story is, is told in the Old Testament. Now, when you look at Habakkuk's story, Habakkuk came to a season in life of horrific suffering, and his dancing was turned into mourning. Have you ever been there? Where you go through this difficult season in life, and like your life's been turned upside down? And all of a sudden, your dancing has been turned into mourning. He came to know, though, in the midst of all this, real joy. We can make Habakkuk's story our story. Now, some of the context here of Habakkuk's story, the people of God, Israel, they had rebelled against him. They had rejected the Lord their God. They had turned to idols of all shapes and sizes and had become unfaithful in the most ungodly of ways. Life as Israel had known, had known it would be radically changed. And not only would thousands of people lose their lives, but they would lose their homes, they would lose their crops, their livestock, and even more, bringing wave after wave after wave of grief. Yet, his mourning would be turned back into dancing. Now, if you look at the book of Habakkuk, notice this conversation between God and Habakkuk as it begins in Habakkuk chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you, know, you do not come to say. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. Does that sound familiar? Now notice here, speaking to God, Habakkuk began with these hard questions, just like us. How long and why? He wanted to know why. Why the destruction? Why the violence? Why the strife? Why the conflict? You know, in this plentiful nation, why is this happening? You know, why had this nation rejected and turned away from God? Why? Habakkuk wanted to know then how long, all right? Because this is going on, how long is this suffering going to continue? And then notice Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. The Lord replied, look around at the nations, look, at, look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. I'm raising up the Babylonians, a cruel and violent people. They will march across the world and conquer other lands. Now this, this was a harsh answer to the hard questions asked by Habakkuk. Habakkuk now had the heavy burden of going and communicating this to all of God's people. Now, it's one thing to share good news, right? We all like good news, yet it's an entirely different thing to be the bearer of bad news. The name Habakkuk means embrace. So Habakkuk has some bad news that he had to embrace, and the only way he could do this was to embrace God as his refuge and his strength, his rock which is exactly what he did. He embraced God first before he could embrace this bad news and go and communicate to the people. This conversation begins with hard questions. And then it comes to harsh answers. But yet it ends with real hope. If we fast forward to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16. I trembled inside when I heard this. My lips quivered with fear. My legs gave way beneath me. And I shook in terror. I will wait quietly for the coming day when the disaster will strike the people who invade us. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the Lord of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. Now notice here, this is Habakkuk's prayer to God. He's remembering and acknowledging the indescribable power of God as in times past. He, he doesn't like what he hears, specifically the answer he's received to his questions. Why and how long? 
And in response to God's unleashing his power in times past, Habakkuk was physically shaken. That's what we see in verse 16. In all the ways that Israel was strong, they were suddenly weak. Isn't that amazing? That happened once, and we've seen it happen right underneath our nose. In just a moment, as sure as we were strong, we became weak. Their agriculture and economic health of Israel was unexpectedly gone. There were no more figs on the trees. There was no grapes on the vines and a complete crop failure when it came up to the olives. And to make matters worse, there were no more sheep or cattle to be found. The food chain and economic engine of Israel was abruptly stopped. This was a harsh, hard reality for Habakkuk. Now I want to stop right there. Does that sound remotely similar? Does that sound similar to our lives today? How easily we can take our eyes off of the one who is our hope and our joy. And this world, when everything is stopped, has a way of getting our attention that, remember, this is not our home. Yet Habakkuk was able to make a decision, an intentional, deliberate decision. Habakkuk chose to rejoice in the Lord, to be joyful in God, for the Lord was his strength. Despite how bleak life looked in that moment, Habakkuk chose to rejoice in God. He would be victorious and not a victim. So what do we need to do today? Here's what we need to do. Push pause. We can literally do that. Push pause. America and much of the world has been invaded by a virus. Massive losses are real from the passing away of people to the loss of jobs and much more. A tsunami of sadness and grief drowns people in despair. Like Habakkuk, we're asking why, why this is happening and how much longer until it's over. After asking the hard questions, we don't like sometimes the harsh answers and observations that we are seeing. Just like Habakkuk, such such as the increasing numbers of people with this virus the rising number of people who have died from this virus. We do not like empty parking lots and idle businesses. We do not like canceled commencements in closed churches. As in the day of Habakkuk, we find ourselves shaken to our very core. Our dancing has turned into mourning. Think with me. There's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is rooted in our circumstances. There's a difference between happiness and joy, right? A major difference. We learn from Habakkuk how to find joy. Like Habakkuk, we can turn our mourning into dancing. We can turn our experience into a contagious joy. How did Habakkuk's sobbing turn into singing? Knowing that his city was going to be destroyed, his life and his land forever changed. How was he able to rejoice in the Lord again and again? How can we do this? And the answer is right here in God's word. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Now, Habakkuk mentioned an important and vital practice in his day here, and that was being the city watchman. It was an essential job that men were stationed at guard posts, watchtowers on the city wall to look at look for any kind of threat advancing towards the city. Now, I want to give you three powerful W's today that we learn here from Habakkuk that we need. I want you to be encouraged today. Here are the three W's that we need to grab a hold of and we need to apply to our lives so that we can be encouraged. Here's the first W, watch. Make certain to watch for God's goodness and we can then be able to rejoice in the Lord. Our mourning will turn into dancing. The media continues to feed us a constant feast of bad news. Remember, we become what we eat, not only physically, but mentally. If we all hear, all we hear is one piece of bad news after one piece of bad news, one after another, we will be crushed by the weight of hopelessness and worry and stress and and despair. Philippians chapter four, verse four. Paul says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Say that with me out loud, rejoice. 
Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. And then you will experience God's peace, which extend, exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The second word I want you to grab a hold of is the word, word. Did you notice that in addition to watching, Habakkuk said that he would look to see what the Lord would say to me what the Lord was going to say to him. We need to look to hear a word from the Lord, from God. God has been speaking from the very beginning of time. When he said from the very beginning of time, let there be light. We know that God does not change. He is everlasting. And God is still speaking to us today. The question is, here's the question. Are we listening in our hands, we have the timeless word of God. And the word of God is filled with words of strong promise, wise counsel. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Notice what Paul reminds us of here in Romans chapter 15 about the word of God. Such things were written in the scripture long ago to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. As you and I, as we are spending more time reading God's word, it touches our lives and changes our lives. Now, here's the question. Are we spending more time reading the news or the word? Are we spending more time playing video games and binging on Netflix? Or are we reading and thinking on and meditating upon the word of God? When we turn to the word of God, we hear from God. When we hear from God, we can rejoice in God. Our morning will be turned into dancing. And here's our third word, our third W, the word worship. Worship. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. God was then and will also be worthy of our worship. Habakkuk was accepting the grim reality that God was about to punish the Israelites by their enemy, the Babylonians. It left Habakkuk silent before God. We worship God not only with our songs, but with our silence. That's what I want you to see here. In the midst of all this, our worship setting corporately has changed in this season. It's put us in a place where many times we find us in a place of silence. And Habakkuk asked God in that moment, why? Why is this suffering happening in the land of Judah? How long will this last? We've done the same thing in those moments of silence. Why? How long? Though it wasn't the answer he was hoping to hear from God, Habakkuk accepted what God had to say. And in the end, Habakkuk chose to rejoice in the Lord. Just like Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And Paul says, again, I say, rejoice, worship. In the Old Testament, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Notice what Nehemiah says to the people of Israel. And Nehemiah continued, this is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you would say that last phrase with me out loud. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. We can know this joy when we watch for the goodness of the Lord, when we hear the Lord speak to us in his word, and when we sincerely worship the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Know that he is in his holy temple. He is worthy of our worship today. Happiness is rooted in our circumstances, but joy is rooted in, in our relationship with God. Friends, on the night before Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus said to his disciples, in this world you will have, what's the key word? Trouble. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome 
the world. The good news is this. Jesus Christ is the overcomer. He alone is the one who saves us. He is worthy of all the glory and honor and praise, worship that we can give to him. Joy is real. We may watch a spectacular sunrise or sunset, and we don't want it to end. We may travel and see a spectacular sight where we've never been and we don't want to leave. We may love seeing and swimming in the ocean for the very first time. We may look forward to seeing and walking uh, into the Grand Canyon for the very first time. We don't want these spectacular moments to end, but they do. They always end. Whatever joy-filled moment it is in this world, we tend to, th to say out loud or we think, I don't want this to ever end. I don't want to have to leave this spot, but it does. Why? This is not home. This is not our world. We're just passing through. When we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, when we trust in his death on the cross for the gift of eternal life, for our salvation, we will be with the Lord and we will be with Jesus and one another forever. There will be unspeakable joy in heaven forever. My grandparents had to endure the Great Depression. When they were in high school, World War II impacted them and everyone in America. And then it was the Korean War. And then it was the Cold War. My parents had to endure the Vietnam War. And the list can go on and on and on of all the things that every generation has had to endure in America. Over a hundred times we read this phrase in the Bible that simply, just simply says this, over a hundred times, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. The Great Depression, it came to pass. World War II came to pass. And many, many more, they came to pass. And this crisis, in this moment, this season, it will come to pass. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flock die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. Let's spread some contagious joy today. Why? Because our God is worthy. He is worthy. He is still sitting on his throne and he is in control. He's got this. Remember who you are. You are a child of the king and this world is not your home. We're just passing through. Hey, thanks for joining us for midweek worship and encouragement. And again, please consider sharing this video today. Share some hope and truth to those in your life who need this. In the midst of all the chaos, people need hope. They need a contagious faith and a contagious joy. Hey, don't forget this weekend to join us for Church Online. We will be continuing our current series, Good News is Coming. This weekend, we're gonna look at hope versus despair. Which one are you gonna, which one are you gonna choose, hope or despair? We'll have multiple services available at ringgoldchurch.com, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We made our services available on a wide spread of different platforms and times the best fit our church demographics, and beyond. We also have services for our kids and our youth. So to learn more about this, go to Ringo Church online. Uh, visit us at ringochurch.com. Hey, thanks for being with us today. God bless you.